So hello everybody and welcome back and as the second episode of the top down shooter we're gonna be making some enemies to knife at but it's not showing anyway so and here it is created some simple sprites right here and yeah and then I did a few things like um, adjust a circle collider but we're gonna do now we're gonna add in a box collider here 2d and we got we're gonna trigger it and then we're just gonna adjust this until it's right because we're gonna need something to help detect collisions with other people other enemies so we're gonna need this and this should be all right but here's another thing because it's actually really vague where the um colliders are going we're gonna go in a polygon collider which what's cool is that it just goes by the side the sideline and just like really cool. So if you start clicking pay, play, you'll see that there's no difference from last time. It's just moving around with the WASD keys and then um arrow keys the left and right just to rotate the player. So then now you see an error because you have a face on the player now and now you gotta change that. And in order to change that, we gotta just make this one stick rotate. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna double click on the player body not play body we're gonna double click on the movement script and then wait for that to load and then we're gonna edit something inside all right so the script is loaded and you see that here's the rotation place and here's the movement and now what we want to do is to just rotate um the knife right so we're gonna put in a new transform that loads so we're gonna put in here a public transform variable called knife which is what mine is and instead of transform dot rotate you want to put in knife whoops knife dot rotate instead of transform dot rotate so it only rotates the knife and if we click control s and save and go back and then hit play and of course i forget to do this all the time you have to drag in the knife over here so there's going to be a small thing over here at least after it loads, you're gonna drag in the stick in, and then you you can start playing. So now it plays here, and you can see there's a transform here. You want to drag the stick in, and now if you click rotate, there's one problem. It's rotating by its pivot point. And now, in order to fix that, all you have to do is go into the knife thing, or maybe you want to do the other one first. But you want to go to the knife, go to click sprite editor. Put this to somewhere here, right under the handle. So that now when it rotates, it'll rotate. Yeah, now you see something's wrong. Okay, so now you want to um, offset this to the Y just a tiny bit, and then to the X, something like that, all right? And then you want to drag this down to where you want this to rotate in. Drag the stick in here, click play, and it should start normally. So now it's starting, and it, you see now the knife goes like that. Now the player just can just move around without having his head twisted. All right, great. So now what you want? Now what we want is an enemy spawner, right? So what you want to do now is create an enemy. You want to just click to the object sprite, just like the other one. You want to create a knob, increase the size a bit. Her, just let's just put this to black as well. Put this. We reset its transform. I'm doing this the hard way. Drag this in, and now you have an enemy. This enemy though, um, will need its own AI. But before that, I want to first test out if it's gonna work the spawner. So I'm gonna make a spawner where it generates um. A radius around itself and inside the radius it's gonna be a random point outside of it and every once in a while it'll just instantiate the enemy and then go towards the player the player will eventually kill it so in order to do that we're gonna create a new game object maybe reset its position and call it enemy spawner now you want to head back into visual studio reload the solution for me at least and then we can start programming when it finished loading, alright. And then you want to click in assets, 
enemy spawner. I want to. You want to keep the first one because we're gonna need to use them. And then you, I'm just gonna delete this because I'm. I just wanted to. But void start. You want to put in a start code routine. And I'm gonna call this spawn. And the I enumerator. Uh, I enumerator. Spawn. Yield return new. Wait for seconds. One. And then you want to instantiate. Over here, you want to create a public game object. Enemy. Or, no, we don't even have to do this. We can just put in a spawn enemy method. And then, as well as a few variables. So, public float, spawn radius, public... Nope. It's opposite. So this is um, private because we don't we don't need to know about this, but we can but we need to know about what the start spot radius is. And you know we just want to put something like big, something big like ten. The reason this is, has an error right now is because we don't have anything we don't have a method that does this. So, but before we do that, um, we're gonna go to our update method that we don't have right now. We're gonna add in. And then we're gonna put spawn radius is equal to start spawn radius. We can actually put this in the start method as well, but I just wanted to put it here. I don't know why it did that, but and then I'm gonna come put in a sp spawn enemy method. In here, you want to put in oh wait yeah vector two dot spawn position is equal to um so over here we need to mention the player's position, but you don't really know that. So what you want to do in here, you want to create a public static vector three position to so that you can reference position anywhere. So that you're gonna put in um, movement dot position, and then let's just save this because you know, and then um, spawn position is equal to random dot inside unit circle dot normalize times spawn radius so it's gonna choose a random position inside the spawn radius and then after that it's gonna instantiate an enemy at spawn position position yeah that that's it quaternion dot identity and that should make this thing spawn every one second. So we're, gonna, we're just going to make this load. And enemy movement, we're not going to do t this time because this video I want to keep it short. And enemy spawner wasn't a very easy topic to teach. So we're just going to keep this for now. And when we finish with the spawner, it has no problem. We're just going to finish this video off. So then we don't want to keep it like this but you can't, because you can't see it. But you'll see that every second or something like that. You'll see it should start. Oh, there's one mistake here. I just forgot. You have to redo this because after this finishes, you're just literally telling them to stop the script. So you're just going to put in another start core routine. Spawn. Because then it means you finish this. It goes back. Counts one second again. Whoops. Counts one second again. Do the spawn enemy. Do it again. So now you'll see that every one second, it should spawn an enemy. Uh, other than this black dot that was always there. Yeah, so now you see outside of the radius, you'll see that it just randomly spawns these things. Next video, we're going to be making them go towards the players so that you can actually attack them or kill them or something. But for now, this is all we have. Maybe we can increase this to something like 15 to make this even further because it's getting really close to camera. And you don't want that to happen. So thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys liked it, be sure to like the video. Subscribe, click the bell to um, get notified when I upload the next part of the series. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.